So we've got to the access ports configured. We need to configure a trunk port between the switch and the router. And we need to configure the router with DHCP pools so it can allocate IP addresses to the PCs. So on interface F1 slash zero, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. Now this is where devices vary. On a lot of switches, you need to specify the encapsulation first before you can make the port a trunk. On this device, notice what happens when I set the port to trunk. It's immediately accepted. So I can specify the encapsulation, but it's not necessary. So show run interface F1 slash zero. Notice it's a trunk port and we don't see the encapsulation because that's the default. Now we did get a warning about DTP or dynamic trunk protocol. I'll discuss that in a separate video. What I wanna do now is configure the router as a router on a stick and configure it for inter VLAN routing and set up a DHCP. So on the router, show IP interface brief. The interface that we need to configure is FOST Ethernet 00. So interface F0 slash zero, no shut. Exit out of that, interface F0 slash zero dot one, enter. Encapsulation dot one Q, VLAN one is gonna be our native or untagged VLAN. IP address that I'll configure here is 10.1.1.254 slash 24 mask. Interface F0 slash 1, 10. Encapsulation, dot 1Q, 10. This is not gonna be the native VLAN because VLAN 1 is the native VLAN. IP address 10.1.10.254 slash 24 mask. Interface F0 slash 0 dot 20. Encapsulation here will be dot 1Q in VLAN 20. IP address will be 10.1.20.254. We can do something similar for subinterface 30. Encapsulation dot 1Q VLAN 30. IP address is 10.1.30.254. So show run will allow us to view the configuration. Notice we have created four subinterfaces. Now the subinterface number doesn't have to be the same as the VLAN. That just keeps things simple. So we don't have any configuration on the physical interface. All configuration is done on the subinterface. So we're specifying the encapsulation and IP address on the subinterfaces. What we need to do now is configure a DHCP pool. So I'll configure a pool, and you could do this by name or VLAN. In this example, I'm gonna do it by VLAN. So rather than using names such as this, I'm gonna use the actual VLAN number in the real world, you might wanna use names such as sales, support, etc. So the network for VLAN 10 is gonna be network 10.1.10.0 with a slash 24 mask. Default gateway or default router is gonna be the router. The DNS server will set to Google and then we can do something very similar for the next VLAN. And this is where you may wanna use Notepad to speed things up. But I'm essentially just duplicating the configuration, but making slight changes with the IP addresses. So show run will allow us to view the DHCP pools. There's VLAN 10. VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So that looks good. I'm gonna save the config of the router, save the config of the switch, show IP DHCP binding. At the moment, there are no bindings. If we've done this right, we should see DHCP bindings once we turn on the PCs. So I'll turn this guy on, turn this one on, 
turn the third one on and turn on the fourth one. Uh, let's see if we get any DHCP requests. We are. IP address is allocated to the first client. Looks like something may be wrong. What have we done wrong here? Let's check. So that looks good. Let's check on the switch. VLANs look good, show IP interface brief. Our interfaces at the moment are down. So what I'll do is go on to F1 slash zero, administratively shut it and then no shut it. Interfaces come up. So that looks like it was the problem. Show IP interface brief. That interface is now up. The other interfaces have come up as well, actually. So this could be a GNS3 issue rather than an issue with the configuration. Show IP interface brief again. Interfaces are up. What I'll do is save the config because it looks like there may be a GNS3 problem. Okay, so that looks better now. We have four devices that have been allocated IP addresses. If you have problems like this, you may need to shut down GNS3 and start it up again, but that looks good. So what I'll do is open up a console on the first PC. It's obtained an IP address, as we can see here. Can it ping its default gateway? Yes, it can. Can it ping one of the other PCs? 10.1.10.2, yes it can. Can it ping 10.1.20.1, yes it can. Can it ping 10.1.30.1, yes it can. So it looks like our network is working. Here's PC4, ifconfig shows us the IP address of the PC. I'll turn off this ping on PC1, ping 10.1.10.1, that works, ping 10.1.10.2, that works, ping 10.1.20.1 works, ping 10.1.30.1 works. So it looks like our network is working. That's a very basic start to our GNS3 networks. In this example, I'm using two 3725 router images, one as a layer two switch, which is an ether switch module, and one as a router to do the inter VLAN routing. I've also got four Alpine Linux hosts. The reason for using them is that they are very lightweight PCs. So that would allow us to build very large topologies without using a lot of resources. So hence me using those. I think that's a good way to start. Let's do one more thing before we end off this lab. I'll bring a NAT cloud into the topology. I'll connect the router to the NAT cloud. On the router, show IP interface brief. This interface is currently shut down. So on the router, interface F0 slash one, no shut. IP address, I'll use DHCP on this interface. The NAT cloud should allocate an IP address to the router, and there it has. So can the router ping google.com? At the moment, no. We've got to enable IP domain lookup. Try again. Yes, it can. So the router can now ping google.com. Can the PCs ping google.com? At the moment, not. And that's because we need to enable NAT on the router. So I'm going to say IP NAT inside source list one interface F0 slash one overload. So I'm enabling 
PAT or port address translation on this interface. Before I continue, I'm going to save the config in case something goes wrong. This interface is the outside interface. Notice what's happening here. Sometimes when you enable NAT on a router, it can crash the router, hence me saving the configuration before I go any further. It may be worth doing that on all your devices before you enable NAT on your routers in GNS3. Okay, let's come back, IP NAT inside. Now I've made a mistake in the configuration. Do you know what it is? I'm gonna fix it shortly. So the last thing I need to do is create an access list, access list one, permit. And I'm gonna permit the networks individually so that we can restrict who can get to the internet. Here are the three networks. The management network won't be able to get to the internet. But this router can get to the internet. The switch won't be able to, but let's see if the PCs can. At the moment we're still having a problem. Show IP route. Show IP NAT translation. No NAT translations. What did I do wrong? Let's try PC1, ping google.com. Show access list one. We are getting matches on our access list. So you can see four matches here. Do that ping again. Show IP NAT translation. Definitely something wrong with our NAT configuration. So why is this not working? Did you spot the mistake that I made? Now notice this here, IP NAT inside is on the physical interface, but I should actually have that on the sub interfaces. So what I need to do is go onto each sub interface and use the command IP NAT inside and do that on sub interface one, 10, 20, and 30. Show run. Let's see if that looks better now. We do have our commands on the sub interfaces. So can the PCs ping google.com? Yes, they can. So show IP NAT translation. That looks better. PC1 is able to ping google.com. Here's PC4. It can also ping google.com. NAT translation shows that. Here's PC4. What about PC3 as an example? Ping google.com. It's able to ping google.com. What about cisco.com? It's able to ping cisco as well. If we look at the NAT translations, Notice we see multiple NAT translations. So at this point, we've been able to configure a basic SMB network. We've configured VLANs. We've configured an 802.1Q trunk between the router and the switch. We've configured inter-VLAN routing. We've configured NAT or port address translation. We've configured DHCP and we've tested connectivity to the internet. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.